Hello all, welcome to rotrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about AR invoice import using a BDI. Let's get into the agenda. We'll try to understand what are the data migration approaches we have are available for AR invoices and the details about the interface error as well as base table and how do we purge the interface table as well as some of the very important prerequisite tasks which you require for your FBDI to work. Okay. So there are three approaches available for AD, like uh, for AR invoice. One is ADFDI, other one is FBDI, which we'll discuss, another one is REST API. Okay. So let's see the steps required to perform import using FBDI. The first and foremost important thing is you have to get the right template based on the version which you are working on. Next one is fill up the data in the FBDI template and generate the zip file. Next one is load the data. Load, we have to you know like invoke the load interface file for import. So this third step involves two steps. Nothing but like you have to you have to mention two task details. First one is you have to select the load interface file for import ESS job. In that you have to select the property as import import AD auto invoice in that you have to select the zip file and finally if the third step is successfully completed then you have to invoke the fourth one and where you have to mention import auto invoice in there you have to mention there are some set of like what you call uh, parameters which you have to mention based on the data which you have filled up right so this is the first step you have to get the template based on your particular version which you're working on and next step is this is the template and it has Total five sheets. The first one is instruction sheet, and the remaining are the remaining four sheets are the data sheets which you have to fill it up. And not all are mandatory. So based on the configuration which you are working, you have to fill up the appropriate sheet. In our particular sample today, we'll be filling up only one sheet that is RA interface lines all because as per our configuration, the training system configuration, we don't we don't need to fill up, fill it up the remaining set of information. That's why we'll fill up only one sheet. And if at all in your requirement, you may fill it up two sheets or three sheets or maybe four sheets. It all depends upon the requirement. Okay. Now the third step, like uh, you have to invoke, uh, like uh, you have to invoke a job called schedule new. The job name is load interface file for import. In that, you have to mention the imp import auto invoice. Here, if you ob observe, load file to interface was only one because when you generate a zip file in that you'll have only one sheet because it will have the number of sheets based upon the number of sheets you have to fill you have filled up in our case as we will be filling up only one sheet we'll have only one csv file generated and you will have only low load file to interface will be called only once okay now the final one is perform import will be performing the import using a job called import auto invoice and once this is completed it will invo invoke another job called import auto invoice execution report which will have the result of your FBDI job. Nothing but like uh, once you, like uh, after in, after uploading the data from the interface table, the next step was in import auto invoice. This particular import auto invoice will validate the data in the interface table and perform the real input. Nothing but it will upload the data into the base table, but still when it gets uploaded during, into the base table, there are, again, you'll have some set of other validation. And this execution reports will give you the clear details about what is important, what is not important, and why it is not important. Everything you'll find in the import auto invoice execution report that will be invoked automatically. Okay. And now these are the details of the interface error and base tables, which are very much important when you work with the FBDI. I mean, if any FBDI, when you work with any FBDI import, always try to get the detailed information about the interface error as well as base table. Because the execution report which you may have, it may not have full information. And also, if it is one or two records or a couple of records from the execution reports, you can easily filter it out and find out which record failed and why it failed. But if it is a larger data, assume that you have 10,000 invoices. And in that 10,000 invoices, you have 2,000 invoices failed. And how can you scroll to the PDF and find out which invoice failed and which invoice successful? It is very tough, right? That's a, that's a reason you always need to understand the interface error table. And based on that, you can get the real information, okay? Now, getting to the entity entity details like a header table or like if, here, if you observe the base table details, like a, when here in the sheet, we don't have any line information, you don't have any header information, but at runtime, what will happen is whatever you whatever you mentioned in the sheet at the interface lines level, some set of information will get populated at the header level. Okay, that will be available in the RA customer transactions all and similar lines table RA customer transaction lines all. Then distribution or a customer or a cust transaction line GL distribution all and similarly we have transaction line sales report. Okay, these are some of the very important table. Of course, there are other the other tables out there, but I have not included them. Now, how do you purge it? 
let us say there are chances that like uh, assume that like uh, you got some issue while fill filleting up the template or some configuration issue or something like that and you have to purge it right you just need to invoke a job called purge interface table and you have to mention the parameter the import process name called import auto invoice mention the load request id and what it will do is it will remove the data or nothing but it will delete the data from the interface table so that again you can re-upload the data and of course there is another way to you know rather than purging it see there are two options why do we come across modification of the data which is available in the interface table right one is due to some missed value or you want to update some value right so assume that if you you have you have, you have missed some value and you're like uh, there is some configuration you don't want you don't want to have the data for reprocessing you simply want to delete it and you want to re-upload then you can go with this option other option is let us say you want to correct some data okay you know what to be corrected and it was only for few records and you don't want to re-import again what you can do is using adfda option you can correct the data nothing but you can using AD, adfda option you can download the data and you can modify it and you can perform import that is another option so both are different purposes based on the requirement you can use the purge interface approach or you can use the adfda approach for the purpose of modification as well as of course creation also okay now this is how like uh, if you want to you need to validate right once the invoice get imported definitely always needs to need to validate how the your invoice number is looking like because still there are chances you know you would have messed some kind of columns or you want to re-verify whether what is happening to the invoice which was created because when you perform the invoice import there are some set of columns which are very much important that will impact your gl balances also right so nothing but you have to check the like what you call the accounting date in which it is getting created and the distribution in which it is getting populated and what are data sources and account number site number payment terms there's some set of other important columns which will be there that's the reason always when you perform the real import try to upload sample data get it verified perfectly and if you think it is good then try with the bulk upload okay don't try to do the bulk upload at a stretch always try to do in a minimal set of loading and then validate it perfectly and then you perform the import because once you import the data there is a minimal chances of correcting the data again using rest api because there are some set of columns which you can't simply edit it at all right this is very difficult okay so now once you perform import and coming to the last one there are few important few important tasks for your everyday import what to work it okay so the first one is you have to like in the descriptive flex field right in the r interface lines i will just see that so in the R interface line all we have one set of column called interface descriptive flexible wherein you have to mention you have to configure that then only particular this particular invoice import will work so in our case we have considered the R interface line all which is the flexi code and this is our context context sensitive say context segment xx or underscore data migration in that we have configured only one element and that is linked to attribute one this is one of the configuration element and other one which we require is transaction source and our transaction sources or xx or underscore data migration and in this we have mentioned what to be considered like uh, i have disabled auto invoice numbering and i have allowed duplicate transaction number and some set of other configuration thing which are considered again based on the requirement you have to modify and the very important one is i have selected here type as imported right so this will be considered only this transaction source can be considered only during import if you want to create from manually this particular data, data migration tran this transaction source will not be shown in the ui okay so this is a initial discussion about the how we perform the import now we'll start the real import like i'll just try to design i mean go to the template and we'll discuss that okay so give me one minute yep so this is our template and so and let us see what all data we have to fill it up so we'll go here so the first important field is the business unit and the transaction source which we have created data migration transaction type it can be invoice and payment terms again based on your particular configuration transaction date it can give today's date or maybe legacy date accounting date in which particular period you want to load it and invoice number this i already loaded but i better i want to give a new number just see whether it will get created or not next one is yeah this is your when you create invoice right it always require a bit account number as well as bill to site number okay so this is this is a org reference of the bill to customer reference which is we don't preferable we don't populate this all stuff we prefer to populate the account number as well as site number so i'm just scrolling right so this is the account number and this is site number okay next one is transaction type is line i don't want to populate any lines uh, like a tax lines i simply want to populate only lines and uh, this is a description currency conversion type conversion date conversion rate amount okay and unit selling price next one is yeah here is very important field and here i mentioned my 
context of my DFFS XX or underscore data migration. In my case, transaction source as well as transaction flexible context, both are same. It is, doesn't mean that we have to be same. You can have different things. You can have a different context as well as different data sources. So again, based on the requirement, you have to configure appropriately. And this is a field I have to populate because as per my configuration, I have to populate the legacy transaction number here. Okay. So, and any other field? I think more than this. That's it. So these are the fields we have to populate. And the interface distribution, sales credit, and uh, this one contingency, nothing I'm populating. Okay. So now I'll go here, save it. And it'll take some time, generate. Okay. So I already have the zip file. I simply rewrite that, save it. That's it. The zip got generated. Now go to the instance. And here, click on search again to just see whether the page is active or not. Yep, it is active. Click on schedule new process. And the first job you have to select is load interface file for import. Click on OK. And here you select import auto invoice. Search it. Select this. Now select the zip file which was generated. Auto invoice input. And submit. Right. So 833, the job ID is ending with. Let's see what happens to this. It may take a couple of seconds based on the system performance or data size, many other factors. Yep, it is successfully loaded. It has only one load file to interface, as I told you. And you can observe that zip file which was generated should have only one CSV file. Okay, then that too, our interface lines all dot CSV. Okay, now let's come back here and click on schedule new process and here import auto invoice and click on OK. Select US1 business unit. And here, the transaction source name is XX or underscore data migration. And remaining, you can just ignore and click on submit. And let's see. Still taking time. It's okay. Even though it is still, even though it is just one record, is taking time. So it could be. Number of reasons. It could be like uh, some other resource parallel working on the system, or it can be system is slow. It can be any number of reasons. So it's okay. You have to just wait. Okay. So this got completed and automatically invoke the other job called import auto invoice execution report. And now this is a very important document to validate whether our import is successful or not. Still uh, getting, still running. Yeah. So this will generate a PDF report. Let's see. Yep, we're completed. Now select the execution report and 
scroll down and click on out and here in the output you can see output name click here and it will generate a pdf and here you can see that uh, data source or i can better download this one yeah you can see that in a full window so selected one successfully process one and scroll down and it says invoice one mod is 250 and that's it it is not giving any invoice number as such okay and if it was error out it was given that information but now what we can do is as we know our invoice number let us search from ui so i will navigate to the home page to just see the navigation again and the navigation for this one is you have to click on receive application click on billing task and here in the task list you can just select invoice number x6 or i is starting i mean my invoice number starts with x6 or a and you can see that there are two invoice number one was the one which i already uploaded and this is the one which is ending with 002 which i just uploaded okay and click here and uh, you just try to validate the few important things like um, what are the customer details which is very important and the accounting date again which is very important and the payment terms and the amount again this is very important and whether you want to have your tax calculated or not and check the distribution that is again very important field you can click on review distribution and find out what is your revenue and receivables amount and to which accounts it is getting populated if it is something mistake you know better you configure the data i mean your particular configuration accordingly and then you can perform the remaining import okay so this is how we can import the data migration using fbdi and if at all yeah one more thing if at all if you want to correct the error right correct the error records the option of adfdi or from where you can check it out is just click go to billing and here you can just click on import exceptions so once you click on import exception it will show you a transaction source and the error record like a number of exception and select the appropriate one and once you click on this one it will download the excel excel sx file which is your adfda file and using this you can open it up and correct it and you can perform the update as well as import okay so this is how we can perform the fbdi import for ar invoice in oracle fusion thank you